Hello everyone, welcome to the Testing Academy. In this video, we will learn the most important question that arise in software testers mind. When do defects arise in software? And when should testing team be involved in software development lifecycle? To get started, let's target the first question. When do defects arise in software? Let's take an example of requirement one. In first phase, of software development lifecycle, which is the requirements gathering phase, business analysts captured the correct requirements from business. In the second phase, which is the design phase, the designers or solution architects built the design as per the correct requirements captured in the first phase. In third phase, when it came to developers, they developed the software as per the design. And in the, in the testing phase, when the software is being tested, it will work as expected because correct requirements were gathered, correct design was made, build was done as per the design and software will work as expected. So in, in the first example, correct software will be delivered as part of the process. Now in the second requirement, in the requirement gathering phase, business analyst captured the correct requirement. In the second phase of the cycle, designer did the correct design. However, while doing the build, when developers were doing the coding, they made mistakes in the build. And those mistakes, when came downstream to the testers in the testing cycle, then software um, defects will be found, which will be the build defects. These will be the correctable defects. Software tester will find it, will raise a defect, assign it to developers, and they'll fix the code to correct those defects as per the correct design. Now, in this example, these are the correctable defects. In the third example, you have the correct requirement. Business analyst went to business, gathered the requirements correctly, documented it perfectly fine. However, during the design phase, the solution architect didn't do the correct design. Because of that mistake in design, when that design is fed into the development phase, when developers are referring to the design, they'll baseline their development based on the design that has been done by solution architect. So they'll build as per the design. Now, when the software will come down to software testers, they will figure out that the software is not working as per the requirement. It has the design defects. So in, though in this scenario, to fix those defects, you have to change the design. So redesign will be needed to correct the issues that will be found in this example. Now in the last example, which is requirement four, say in the first phase itself, mistakes were found in the requirement. So when business analysts went to business to capture the requirement, there was some miscommunication or business analyst is not able to get what business wants to be delivered as part of the software. So he did a mistake in the requirement. Now the, the software or the design, the second phase was built to meet the requirement that has been captured by the business analyst, which will flow down to the build team or to the developers. They'll build as per the requirement. And then the testers will test the software as per the design, as per the requirement given by the business analyst. So in this scenario, you won't be able to figure out where um, the issue went because testers will baseline their testing based on the requirement given from the business analyst or from the business. So in this case, defects may be hidden from IT team. It will be um, de uh, deployed and until the business actually does the user acceptance testing, you won't be able to figure out where the software is doing wrong. So in, in these four examples, we have learned 
where the defect can be introduced in different software development life cycle phases. So it, it can be introduced in the requirements phase, it can be introduced in the design phase, it can be introduced in the build phase. Um, so any of the phases, uh, a defect can be introduced. Now coming back to the second question, wherein we want to know what is the correct time or correct phase where uh, a software tester needs to get involved in this software development life cycle. So the answer to that is as early as possible in SDLC. So software testers need to be part of requirements phase to figure out any of the gaps or issues um, during the requirement gathering phase so that we do not introduce any of the requirement defects because the defects that are introduced in the requirements pass on to design development testing and to fix those kind of defects it's a massive cost because you need to change the requirement design build and it's a lot of rework to fix those um, defects so i hope you like this video thank you if you like this video please subscribe to my channel thank you